Hey, it's Big T. Uh, this is going to be the first of a series of lessons where I am going to hopefully put you in a position where you can tie your own flies. So um, the goal for me is to put together a series of videos that walks you through beginning to finish all the fundamentals that you'll need in order to uh, tie just about any fly uh, that's available. And what we'll be doing is starting with a basic fundamental uh, and tying a fly that uses that fundamental uh, as we progress in the lessons. And then the next fly will be a little bit more complicated, adding a fundamental, etc. But today, what I'd like to focus on is just what do you need tool-wise. <clears throat> um, as you can see, I've got a tool caddy here. I've got lots of stuff. I've got things piled up over here. Uh, but if you're just getting started, the basic things that you're going to need are a vise. This is going to be uh, what holds the hook in place. And you need something that's going to hold it uh, well in place so that you can put pressure on it as you wrap materials around, etc. Um, Budget-wise, you can spend $50 on a vise. You can spend $800 on a vise. Starting out, I would budget $100 to $150 for my vise. If you go on the cheap end and you buy a $50 vise and you decide in a month, I'm not going to tie flies, that vise really doesn't have a market. Nobody really wants to pay for a used vise that's on the low end. So really, you've risked $50 as your investment buying that. If you spend $150 and get a quality vise, it's likely you can probably resell that vice for $100 or so, and your loss is the same, but you've got a better uh, product to begin with. So consider that. This is a vice that's got a rotary feature, which means I can actually turn uh, the vice itself and the jaws to wrap materials around uh, and spin it that way. Some vices don't have that. It's all a personal preference if you like to do that. Um, or you feel like that's something you want, you can go that route. Otherwise, we're just going to simply wrap, which we do the majority of the time anyway. Uh, there are other vices. There's a Norvice system I carry in the store. This, I'd say, is for a more advanced, unless you want to start on this. Um, it actually has a spinning feature, a separate pedestal, and a bobbin, which we'll talk about, that is retractable. That's a very good system to work with. It is a little bit different than the others. Um, as far as the next thing that we're going to need are something to hold our thread. This is a bobbin. This actually holds the thread. You put, put the thread in here. You'll make sure it comes through the nozzle. And this is going to help us when we're wrapping and tying our flies. That is a must-have. Bobbins you can spend as little as a few dollars on up to fifty dollars on. Uh, if you go the El Cheapo route, one thing that I have done, hopefully you can see that on each end of this I have super glued a glass bead. That glass bead is smooth because what I've found on the really cheap bobbins is there's um, a rough texture oftentimes to the end and it'll break your thread, but the glass bead will overcompensate for that or overcome that um, flaw. Um, they will fall off occasionally, um, but it's a matter of just getting some super glue out and putting them back on. So that's an option for you as well. Um, as I said, the Norvi system has a retractable uh, bobbin which is really neat so when I pull thread out like that it will retract back in and take up the slack when I need that to happen and that will happen frequently otherwise we have to roll it back up with our fingers so we got our vise we've got our bobbin we've got to have scissors we've got to be able to cut materials and we've got to be able to cut our threads etc um, this is just a basic all-purpose a uh, pair of scissors, pointed edge, so you can get in close. You don't want anything with a rounded edge. You want something with a pointed edge, so you can trim off very close. 
Again, you can invest as little as $5 in a pair of scissors, as much as $30.50. Um, scissors are one of those things we're going to use constantly, and I find on the lower end, they're going to dull quicker, um, and you may not get as much use out of them. But by all means, start that route. You can get fancy and start getting curved scissors and other things. Just start with your basic all-purpose scissor. You can't go wrong with that. Eventually, if you graduate to a nicer pair, you can always use your cheap pair to cut things like uh, wires and have it almost as a trash pair of scissors. Uh, and then we're going to need some sort of tool to put a finishing knot on our fly. You can use your hands and do certain knots. It becomes a little more complicated. The two that I would recommend tool-wise would either be a half-hitch tool and these usually come in sets of threes and the difference are the size hole openings I don't know if that'll show up on camera on these tools um, the smaller hole tool you would use on just a bare hook like a dry fly but if you've got beaded uh, flies that you're trying to use a half hitch knot on you've got to have something that's going to go over that bead a little bit so that you can utilize that tool and then there are also whip finishing tools. Now these whip finishing tools come in a variety of styles. And believe me, the difference in using this tool and this is immense. I can use this tool. I haven't a clue how to use that. I've tried, I haven't really pulled up a video yet. Um, but there are different styles and you will become very um, used to using one style and one technique with a whip finishing tool. It's not just me, my buddy Gordon Vanderpool will come over and tie flies sometimes if we're ready to go out to fish here. He cannot use the one that I use. God bless him. So those are our basic tools that we're gonna need. I don't think you need anything else just to get going and get started. As we progress and use uh, more techniques, I'll show you additional tools that you may wanna have in order to um, in order to accomplish what we're trying to do with those techniques. So look out for that. Next lesson, we are going to learn how to wrap thread, put the hook in our vise, and we're also going to learn how to cinch materials down with what's called a pinch wrap. What I would like you to have on hand for that is a hook, some chenille, uh, standard chenille which we're going to try and tie a San Juan worm with and you can have a bead or no bead. Um, if you uh, ping me, my website's bigtflyfishing.com. I can uh, tell you what kind of materials you'll need or where to find those. Uh, you can find them on my store. Uh, again, it's www.bigtflyfishing.com. Feel free to reach out and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks so much.